Commerce Academy. So I have done a scientific officer previous year questions. So now I have selected a bunch of topics, very important, frequently asked topics for scientific officer. So in this video, we will see two topics, how to find the hybridization of a molecule and glass. So first one, hybridization. So in hybridization, uh, there is a short trick or a formula, which is the number of valence electron number of valence electron valence electrons of central atom of central atom plus number of electrons donated by ligand donated by ligand divided by 2 so when you add the valence electrons of central atom and the number of electrons donated by a ligand divided by 2, a number is formed. Uh, let's call it as x. If x is equal to 2, then the hybridization will be sp. If x is equal to 3, then hybridization is sp2. So if x is equal to 2, then sp, 1 plus 1, 2. 3 means 2 plus 1, 3. Now next 4, sp3, 3 plus 1, 4, 4. So 5, sp3d, 6, sp3d2, 7, sp3d3. So the equation is number of valence electrons donated by a central atom plus number of electrons donated by ligand divided by 2 will give a number. If the number is 2 then it is sp. If the number is 3 sp2 then 4 sp3, 5 sp3d then 6 sp3d2 and 7 sp3d3. So this is the hybridization of that molecule. So if we want to know the shape then it's very easy. If it is 2 and sp then the shape is linear. So the molecule will be like this. Linear. And if it is sp2, it is triangular planar. Triangular planar is like this. So this is triangular planar. And for sp3 tetrahedral. Tetrahedral is like this. Four atoms are there in uh, tetrahedral. If one of the uh, ligand is removed, if one of the ligand is removed, what happens? If one of the ligand is removed, then it will be like this. So this is a pyramidal shape. Pyramidal shape. And again one of the ligand is removed. If this ligand is removed, then what happened? A bend shape is done. Bend shape. So from one uh, structure, we can determine uh, a molecule. That means this parent structure means what? sp3 tetrahedral sp3d trigonal by pyramid. so for example for ammonia so let's uh, calculate the hybridization and shape of ammonia so for ammonia for ammonia nh3 then number of electro valence electrons in central metal atom so central atom is nitrogen so number of valence electrons in nitrogen is 5 plus number of electrons donated by ligand. Ligand is hydrogen. 3 hydrogens are there. 1 hydrogen will give 1 electron. So 1 into 3, 3 by 2. It is 4. 8 by 2, 4. So the x, the number is 4. So for 4, the parent is the hybridization is sp3 and parent structure is tetrahedral. So uh, the structure of ammonia, parent structure, the original structure will be NH3. For NH3, it is tetrahedral. But actually, the structure is what? Pyramidal shape. So NH3. And a long pair is there. So how this pyramidal structure is formed? First tetrahedral structure, parent structure, when one of the ligand is removed, it is pyramidal in shape. So, if you know the parent structure, it's easy to identify the structure of any uh, molecule. So, another example, BF3. BF3. 
So the equation is number of valence electrons of central atom. That is boron. For boron, how many valence electrons are there? Three. Plus number of electrons donated by ligand. That is fluorine. One fluorine will give one electron. So three divided by two. Six by two. Six by two is three. So if the number is three, the hybridization will be what? Sp two. So the hybridization is sp2 and the structure will be triangular planar. Triangular planar. So the structure BF3 will be like this. Triangular planar and sp3 hybridization. Now another example XeO3 xenon oxide. So in XeO3, the central atom is Xe xenon and the valence electrons of xenon is 8 plus number of electrons donated by ligand, oxygen. So in this uh, molecule, in this type of molecule, double bonded oxygen is there. In XeO3, the shape, uh, the structure is like this. Double bonded O is there. So for double bonded, we don't consider the ligand. So, if double bonded ligand is there, then we don't consider the electrons donated by ligand. So, here we will put 0 or either we don't consider the ligand. So, 8 by 2. 8 by 2 is 4. So, for 4 sp3, that is tetrahedral. Parallel structure is tetrahedral. But here, how many ligands are there? 3 ligands. So, one of the ligands is removed. So, the structure will be if one of the ligand is removed, the structure will be pyramidal in shape. Pyramidal in shape. So, XeO3 will be pyramidal in shape. One long pair will be there. So, if double bonded ligand is there, we don't consider the ligand. Just write the number of valence electrons of the central atom divided by 2. That number will give hybridization and parent structure. Then, just look on the number of ligands. If number of ligands is 3 in tetrahedral, then one of the ligands is removed, then we will get pyramidal in shape. Now, next example is ICl4 minus. So, iodine chloride. So, the equation is number of central valence electrons in central atom plus number of electrons donated by ligand. So, the central valence electron is R4 iodine is 7 plus 4 chlorine. So, 1 chlorine will give 1 electron. So, 4 chlorine will give 4 electrons plus 1. How this plus 1 came? Minus 1 charge is there. Minus 1 charge means 1 electron is added to ICl4. So, plus 1. So, total number of electrons is 7 plus 4 plus 1 divided by 2. So, 7 plus 4, 11. 11 plus 1, 12. 12 by 2, 6. So, for 6, the hybridization is sp 3 d 2 3 plus 2, 5. 5 plus 1, 6. sp3d2. And the parallel structure of sp3d2 is octahedral. Octahedral structure. So, in octahedral structure, two of the ligands are removed. See, here ICl4. If it was ICl6, then uh, six ligands are uh, fulfilled by octahedral structure but here only 4 ligands are there so that means 2 ligands are removed so in octahedral structure when 2 ligands are removed the structure will be like this so for octahedral structure the structure is like this if 2 ligands are removed if 2 ligands are removed the structure will be like this it is a square planar complex so, iodine, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine and chlorine. So, it is a square planar complex. One more thing is there. For D block elements, the tetrahedral uh, structure, the hybridization will be always sp3. And for square planar structure, the hybridization will be dsp2. And this point is important. For platinum 2 complexes, the structure will be square planar complex. And for strong ligands, the structure is always square planar complex. So, uh, this is also important. 
for tetrahedral sp3 square planar d sp2 and platinum 2 complexes it will be square planar in shape and for strong ligands also it will be square planar in shape now we can move on to next topic glass so we have to study only the a type of glasses and its uses. So what is a glass? A glass is a mixture of silky, so alkalis, alkali earth, metals and more common metals. So usually sodium or potassium silkies, uh, the silkies of sodium or potassium, then calcium and lead are used for glasses. So how this glass is formed? The sodium, potassium, calcium, lead, silkies are formed and it is melted. So melted to a point of 600 degrees Celsius something. So for different type of glasses, the melting point also dif differ. So the mixture of sodium silicates, potassium, sodium or potassium silicates, then calcium and lead is mixture, mixed and this is melted down and it is cooled to a temperature. So when it is cooled to a temperature, it will form a glass. So the type of glasses are, first one is soda lime glass. So for soda lime, the Components are sodium carbonate and silica. So the components are sodium carbonate and silica, and it is used for window pane, bottles, tableware. So we have to study the uses of the soda lime glass. Window pane, bottles, and tableware are using soda lime glass. And second one is colored glass. Colored glass means it will have a color. So sodium carbonate. Sand and limestone are used. Limestone means calcium carbonate. So sodium carbonate, sand and the limestone, calcium carbonate are used in colored glass. And it is used for decorating walls, sunglasses, light signals for automobiles. So for vehicles, uh, light signals and for sunglasses, the colored glass is used. Now third type of glass, plate glass. So plate glass is thicker than ordinary glass and have a smooth surface. So the use is shop windows and doors. So the doors and windows of many shops are using the plate glass. It is thicker and smooth surface. And the fourth one is important, the safety glass. Safety glass is used in automobiles bulletproof screens. So what is the speciality of safety glass? So in uh, cars, uh, if, we, if you have noticed, uh, when it is broken, the pieces are not, uh, not uh, dispersed. The pieces are there in the plastic itself, in the window itself. Just a crack will be there. Just a crack will be there in the window. So in safety glass, if the plastic or the glass is broken, the pieces will not uh, fly off. It will be there in the plastic itself. So that is called safety glass. And in safety glass, it is used in automobiles, bulletproof screens. And fifth one is laminated glass. So laminated glass is a bunch of safety glass. A bunch of safety glass is bound together and it is called a laminated glass. And it is used in windshield of car, aeroplanes, etc. Now optical glass. Optical glass is used in lenses, prisms, etc. And it is softer, cleaner, transparent. And now seventh one. It is also important. Borosilicate glass or pyrex. It is used in chemical industry. The conical glass, the, uh, the instruments we use in chemical uh, in lab is using the borosilicate glass, pyrex. And eighth one is lead crystal glass. In lead crystal glass, it has high refractive index and maximum brilliance. Since it has high refractive index, it is very, uh, it is very transparent and it is very expensive because it is using lead. So lead crystals are very expensive and it is used for art objects and expensive glass wares. So the, the shining glass wares um, Many museums are using the lead crystals. Now, ninth one is photochromatic glass. So, what is photochromatic glass? Uh, in cars, in some vehicles, if you have noticed, in brighter light, it will, it will have a darker shade. It will have a darker shade. In bright light, in bright light, it will have a darker shade and it will have its original uh, shade when it is in dim light. 
so it will have a darker shade in bright light that is called photochromatic glass and it is due to the deposition of silver iodate so due to silver iodate these photochromatic glass behave darker in bright light